okay, is this an ability you use in your daily life? I mean, I think that this ability is like the ability of an Olympic athlete. I think it involves many sub-abilities. Some people are extraordinarily astute auditorially to nuances of speech. Uh, others are more visually astute. And then you need practice, you need feedback, you need the opportunity to check your, uh, your beliefs, and you have to be motivated to do that. Interestingly enough, I have what I call the Nimue effect, which is Nimue is the nymph who imprisoned Merlin in a cave. You know, she, he taught her all his spells, and then she used them to get rid of him, okay? Why didn't he see it coming? Because he was in love, right? Sort of, I mean, you know, as much as the wizard can be in love. So it turns out that many of the truth wizards are not any better than the rest of us in their personal lives. They've had many marriages, you know, some of them have never been married. So, you know, they, in their personal lives, they can't get that objectivity that's necessary, that concentration that's necessary. Uh, and they vary in terms of how overwhelmed they get with the information they have. Some of them turn it off and deliberately seek outlets, church membership, motorcycle riding, serious hobbies as a way to sort of shut off that kind of process. Some of them are sort of like ADD types, do you know what I mean? And you know, they're like this, do you know what I mean? And that's going on all the time. And they're differentially sensitive to turning it on and off. But they can focus it when it comes to a professional decision. Um, there's a bit of a bias there. So see, what will happen is I'll go to a conference where there'll be 400 people there, and I'll give them the test, okay? How many get 90%? Let's say 10 of them get 90%. How many of you want to be in the study? Oh, yeah, they all want to be in the study. I send them the videotape. How many send it back? Seven, okay? How many then come out for the interview or let me go visit them? Maybe five, okay? So you're going to have a problem of acquiescence to participate in the study, all right? And so there's slightly more women, but I don't think that's a reflection of, of the talent. I think it's just that they're more cooperative. Do you know what I mean? And, you know. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you of facial expression contribute to the instincts that we have about people. I think certainly, I mean, I'm very interested in how people understand each other, how do they form impressions, and I think that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, like, how we dress. So see, you have a particular way of dressing that's different from the girl next to you, and I would draw different conclusions about you based on that. They may not be correct, but I think that's one thing. And then as I talk with you, how responsive are you, I'm going to draw all kinds of things, but it's not just going to be your face. How you speak tells me, like Peter Novak, oh God, Peter Novak, the dean in the dean's office, unbelievable. He could tell from my W, how I said my W, where I grew up and when, okay? He's unbelievable. I had a fricative W or something, I don't know what it was, but it was the way I said W, he could spot where I came from. And so people will use different clues. So facial expressions are certainly one thing, but all of our behavior tells, tells others about us. Thank you.